In this video, I want to talk about delayed danger. Now, what is delayed danger? The term already said it. It's delayed. It's danger that manifests over time. Delayed danger is a situation in which everything seems under control and everything seems to be managed, but it's only a matter of time before all hell breaks loose. Now, what is an example of delayed danger? First, I'm going to give an example of instant danger, so you understand the difference. Instant danger is when you're dealing with a situation that's obviously dangerous. For example, you are walking in the street. And she is a guy with a mask walking around and he has a baseball bat. Unless there's a Halloween party going on or some costume party, you know that something bad is about to happen. But what if you enter a room and everyone looks very angry at you? Then you know that there is danger being emitted on you. So, instant danger is when a perpetrator is direct with his violence or her violence because the perpetrator is so desperate for relief. Because all violence is relief seeking. All violence is relief seeking. That means that every violent individual out there is seeking relief from something. So instant danger is when you can see clearly something is wrong. With the late danger, there are red flags. But because it's delayed, they don't see the red flags for what they are. For example, let's say you have a couple. I'm using a classic example now. You have a couple. And you notice that the woman or the girl doesn't talk much. She's very withdrawn. And then you talk with the husband or the boyfriend and he tells you, well... Often when I'm texting her, she responds later, much later. Now, what's going on here? You have a situation in which a woman, or honestly the female in the relationship, is very slow in communication. Now, this doesn't have to be a red flag. But let's look at the context. That same woman, when her, when her colleague from work matches her, response within seconds now that you know this data you put it in context and realize alone it doesn't add up you're with someone sexually he text texts you and he sends you a text message sometimes you respond hours later or sometimes you don't even respond at all so what's going on but when people from work text you within seconds they have an answer. If you didn't know that she answers within seconds when people from work message her, you would have thought, well, maybe her phone was uh, dying because the battery was empty, or maybe uh, she wanted to answer but her Wi-Fi didn't work. Without knowing the additional information, you would have come to the wrong conclusion. But because you know this additional information, that she responds very quickly when it comes to co-workers, you lie on a minute. Something's wrong. This is an example of delayed danger. Why? Because you have a behavior that cannot be justified. You have a behavior that cannot be accounted for. But because the behavior is not that obvious, you think, well, there may be a good explanation for it. And in some cases, there is a good explanation and there's nothing bad going on. But with the late danger, there's always this additional data that reveals that something is wrong. And it's this additional data that people often don't know or they don't look for. There's, it can happen that someone responds late on text messages. If that's how they are with everyone, that's just the way that they function with everyone. But if they only respond late with you, and you are close and with them, whether it's sexually or, in your, or it's just a business relationship, then you know that this individual is using you. Then you know that this individual 
is only with you, whether it's in a business relationship, whether it's in a so-called friendship, or whether it's in a sexual relationship, or whatever type of relationship it is. If this individual always responds late on your text messages, but they're very quick and very diligent towards other people, that means they're only with you because there's something they want from you. The moment they see other options, they will drop you as if you never existed. In the late danger, there is a red flag, but because the red flag, it, it's, it doesn't appear that grievous, we don't know this is a red flag. And with the late danger, the red flag itself can be explained away unless you see the context. And to see the context, you need additional data. That is why people who are very secretive, you need to watch out with them. Because if you don't know much about them, you can't see the context. In order to see the context, you must have data. Now, with, with few data, you can build the context. But the context is much better discerned when you have the proper data. So when people keep hiding everything about them, watch out with such people. Because they don't want you to see through them. They don't, want, they don't want you to examine them. Someone who has nothing to hide wouldn't mind you examining them. Now, this does not mean that they are obliged to reveal absolutely all their thoughts and all their feelings to you all the time. No. But someone who has no evil to hide, they may have something good they want to hide. Maybe a surprise part for someone. Or maybe they have a good future plan that they don't... Uh, want to say yet because they're still defending the plan. If they have something good to hide, it's not a problem. But if they have something evil to hide, then they absolutely don't want you to know much about them. So people who are way too secretive, watch out with them. Okay, that's also a sign of the late danger when someone hides way too much about themselves. You can hide something about yourself, like practical things, like your address or some other close related in data to you there are some things you need to hide i understand that for security reasons but apart from those basic security data that you need to hide you should be open about yourself to other people unless someone is a reprobate and someone tries to exploit you but if you are way too secretive something is wrong now about the late danger in the late danger you know this is the red flag, but because the red flag can be explained away, you don't think much of it. Now, there is an opposite of the late danger. I mentioned before it's instant danger, but there's also a, another extreme that people fall for. And it is when you see bad motives behind everything someone does. That's a pathology. I'm not teaching that. I'm just teaching you here that there are times you just need to slow down, go to your room, take some coffee or whatever you want to take and relax. And while you are relaxing, you can reflect on stuff. When you do this often, you begin to notice patterns, you begin to notice cycles, you begin to notice oddities. And this is something many people just don't do. I am telling you, not all danger is imminent. Not all danger is instant. Some danger is delayed. If you have a time bomb, the explosion doesn't happen immediately. That's why it's a time bomb. When the moment comes, the, the bomb goes off. So when you carry a time bomb, you're carrying the late danger. That means that the danger will come. And what Satan often does is Satan hands over gifts. Now, quote unquote gifts, because Satan never does anything for free. But Satan will grant you things that appear to be for free, but there's a hidden cost coming with it. Now, let's say, for example, you wanted to purchase a house. And you find out you only have to pay like 2,000 euros for a house. And you see that the house is quite extended. And you think, hold on a minute. Houses like these are sold for like 300,000 euros. 
and I can only purchase one for 2,000 euros. And the house is in, in a good condition. So you call people to come and check the house and they tell you everything's fine with the building, with the construction, uh, the windows are well, there's no moisture in it. So you think, why are people selling this house for such a low price? So you purchase the house, you only pay 2,000 euros. Now you have this extended house. And later, you find out why the house was sold so cheaply. Because below the ground, below in the ground of that house, there are corpses. There's a mass grave in your backyard. People use that house to conduct satanic rituals. And the, the house is haunted also. So when you were offered to purchase the house for only 2,000 euros, that was a red flag already. And if, thing, if the house is so extended and it's so cheap, why doesn't anyone ha have it? Why doesn't anyone purchase it if it's so cheap? If it's such a great advantage, why doesn't anyone want it? Because the other people notice the house and they check the history of the previous owners and they realize, uh uh, I'm not taking this. So in the late danger, you are distracted by an imminent advantage. But that's how the enemy works. He comes with an instant advantage to you. And because you're so happy with advantage, you don't see the context in which the advantage is granted onto you. You can be offered a suitcase with 10 million euros. But if the if the boat is sinking, what what is that suitcase with millions of euros going to help you? It's not going to help you with anything. Seriously, so the context in which you receive that suitcase with money is a trap because if the boat, if the ship is sinking and you take the suitcase, that money in the suitcase is not going to rescue you. So you, it will not benefit you at all. But if someone offers you 10 million euros in a suitcase and you're so overwhelmed by the fact you get 10 million euros and you forget to look around you, well, then you'll get it, the 10 million euros, but you'll probably die because you'll sink with the ship. And that's how the enemy tricks many people. He delays the violence that will overtake you by coming with instant with an instant advantage. So that is why as a believer it is very important for you to see through stuff. And it's very important for you to see through other people and to see through relationships. Some of you are listening to this. You've been into dangerous relationships, but because the danger was delayed, you remained way too long in those relationships. Some of you had jobs that turned out to be toxic and dangerous to your health. But because the danger was delayed, you stayed way too long at that job than you should have. Some of you are in an environment, you live in an area that's becoming more and more dangerous with the day. And everyone from the outside can see that that neighborhood is turning into a ghetto. But you, because you're so acclimatized to the neighborhood, you don't see it. If you would have seen it, common sense would have told you to get out, to move away. Too often, we are blinded by the instant advantages that we have, that we don't see, that we don't see the context in which it happens. Another example, you have a guy who's a bit shy and he meets another girl and he meets a girl who's a bit shy also. So they are a match. 
some outsiders told him, uh, dude, are you serious? You have a shyness issue. Now you have a woman with a shyness issue. Yes, you match. You match in your defect. You don't compliment one another, just match each other's defects. So now you're stuck with someone who's just as defective as you. When are you going to get healed? When are you going to be delivered? There was an instant advantage. Sexual access, companionship, recognition by society. There were instant advantages, but the context shows that it was a trap. Now, this is a message I've recorded in the morning, as you can see. I may not have, have, I may not have sounded that fluent in this video. My apologies to the, for that. But I still wanted to record this video before I start my day. Because I want you to be aware that not all danger is instant. Instant danger, you get away from it very easily. The late danger is danger that accumulates itself over time and you're not even aware it's accumulating itself. Outsiders may see it. That's why it's important to have some acquaintances that check on you from time to time. You're not that deeply involved with them, but from time to time they check out on you. Because such people, because they're outsiders, they will notice things, they will see things you don't. And when such people reveal things onto you, or when they make alert of something, pay attention. Pay attention to when acquaintances or strangers alert you about something. Look, if someone is a creep and they just want attention your expense, that's different. But when you have a stranger or an acquaintance that reveals something about the situation to you, pay attention. You don't have to agree with how they think you should solve it, but at least pay attention to what they're saying because they can sincerely see things you don't they can see escalations before you do because when you are acclimatized to someone you don't notice that you become not at least when you are acclimatized to someone you develop blind spots towards that individual that's why for example in a police investigation if you are related or, or you're socially or sexually involved with a victim, you're not allowed to take the case because the blind spots you've developed will hinder you in solving the case. So, always look at the bigger picture and be at peace.